If someone were to ask me what spiritual value I see in entrepreneurship, I've, I would say that um, uh, certain characteristics like risk, love, the things commanded by the Lord in the parable of the talents, the, the, the servant who went and buried his talent in the ground was risk averse, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right? He was risk averse and it happened. And the Lord the, didn't like that. And the Lord didn't like that. <laughs> um, he, was, he was playing it safe and the Lord didn't tell the parable with the guy with the 10 talents and the guy with the five coming back having lost everything. Right, right, right. right. <laughs> and, and I don't even have a shirt. He tried well. <laughs> but, but, but if, if the Lord chastises through, through that parable the man who's risk averse, that, that tells me that that's something that we ought to avoid. Right. And uh, so when the first pioneers got here to Idaho, there were no jobs, but there was plenty of work. Mm -hmm. Everywhere you go, you could, you could send a colony of people to the moon and there'd be plenty of work. <laughs> <laughs> but there's no jobs and there's no, you know, there, there are plenty of opportunities, but only the ones you create. Yeah. And I, th I don't think that that's possible to do without having a vision of and a commitment to radical love, right? Because when you're taking risks, who are you doing it for? You're doing it for somebody, you know, doing it for someone else. Mm -hmm. um, if you're taking that sort of risk, you want to provide for your children or your family or your grandchildren. Yeah, and on that point, it's, it's interesting. Uh, there's a book entitled uh, The Millionaire Next Door. I don't know if you've ever seen that one. Uh, but it's a study of, of guys, self-made millionaires, who are worth between, I think if I remember, if I remember correctly, like three and ten million dollars. So these are guys who made it, and what they discovered is they have larger families. So it's, it's the inverse of what everyone would assume. Everyone would assume, okay, you want to keep your expenses low, don't have kids, pile up the money in your 401k or whatever, and boom, you're a millionaire. Keep the thermostat down. <laughs> that's right, that's right, that's right. But the guys, who, the guys who actually do it, and they do it in the very unsexy businesses, like junkyards or whatever, you know. Yeah. Uh, the guys who do it have big families, and what gets them up every day is, i got to make sure I've got, you know, do this for the family, you know, that kind of thing. It's not, it's, yeah, there's the perk of... You know, yeah, we get the nice vacation, or we can get the boat, or those kinds of things. But but that's usually when you're in your 50s and 60s. It's it's you know the key years when the kids are small and the business is just struggling. Right. That and when you when you're doing the things that make it possible to get that boat in your your 50s and 60s, those are the those were the things. That's where the love comes in. One of the better books that I've read in the last 10 years was Knowledge and Power by George Gilder. Yeah, yeah. And at the end of that book. He has a, it's one of the, it's the last chapter right near the end of the book. He has a, a chapter that's basically a hymn to capitalism. <laughs> <laughs> I can and, hear him writing, yes. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, but it's, he uh, describes how capitalism, uh, not, not um, crony capitalism, what, sure. I call, what I call crapitalism. Right. But the, the markets and entrepreneur, the real deal. Um, he says the whole thing runs on love. And he, the, that chapter, that whole thing is so beautiful, uh, it almost brought me to tears, you know, which is not uh, what economics text. <laughs> well, <laughs> sometimes economics text. Medicinal science. <laughs> some, sometimes they'll bring you to tears, but, right. but for other reasons. That's right. right, right, yeah. That's great. That's great.